Hello, and welcome to the Nicole Mason Show, the show where we showcase trailblazing women, high achieving women, women who are movers and shakers in their respective industries and vocations, women who have turned their trials into triumphs and their setbacks into strategies for success. And I am so excited today to bring to the Nicole Mason Show uh, a woman who is very near and dear to me love her so much and I want you all to hear her powerful story and to hear her heart so let me read her bio Rhonda Bunch Turner is a woman of many titles the two that she holds dearest to her heart is mother and grandmother these two titles allowed her to embrace embrace her latest title of author for two main reasons. First, Rhonda has vowed to break generational curses, generational cycles that can affect her children and grandchildren. And second, she desires she desires to leave a legacy that will continue long after she departs. I love that part. Long after she departs this side of heaven, besides her love of writing, she enjoys traveling and spending time with family and friends. Rhonda is a best-selling author, and she is the recipient of the Indie Author Legacy Awards Book Anthology of the Year Award. Recently, Rhonda was selected as the 2021 Tracy Sims Washington Award in recognition of the love she spreads and the light that she is. Welcome to the Nicole Mason Show. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm excited and I want to jump right in because you have something to share with the many people who find themselves um, where you have found yourself. But, you know, first I want you to just share a little bit about who you are. Um, I'm a mother, <laughs> a daughter, friend. Um, I'm a, uh, I love people. I love to people watch. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but I just enjoy, um, I enjoy smiling and laughing and definitely talking, getting to know people and um, what make people tick. Um, uh, People watch quite a bit. So sometimes I can go and sit in the park all day and just kind of look at people, observe, hear conversations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and that's really, you know, um, a whole education in and of itself to be able to do that. And, you know, to really come to learn people and know them, et cetera. Uh, I know that uh, you have been a Metro bus operator in the DMV for many years now. So I know that, you know, that certainly proves to help you and how you deal with the public. Um, But I love the way that you spread light and love. Um, in that space. So talk about, you know, some of your mission in life has really been about sharing love with people. How have you done that uh, in that space? Um, One story that stands out, I remember um, I used to, I've pretty much driven all uh, throughout the city, a lot of different lines. And it was a young girl, I think she may have been about 15 or 16. And she used to get on with her friends. And um, when she would be the last one to get off. So we would talk and I used to always um, t- ask her, pull your skirt down, um, mm-hmm. fix your uh, blouse. So I would just say things to her. And I would, I was like, you like hanging out at Chinatown so much. Why don't you put in a, um, application and get you a job at one of the stores here so um I used to always say things to her and she gave me she was like oh god here come the preaching bus driver uh-huh, uh-huh. Me <laughs> pull up. and she was like she always got something to say y'all watch and uh-huh. so if I did if I if I heard ladies don't talk like that mm-hmm. you know if I heard them cursing so 
And one day she peeked her um, head in the door. She wasn't getting on my bus, but she said, I got a job at the store right over there. I said, oh, I'm so happy for you. I'm so proud of you. And then you did to leave those friends alone. She was like, oh my goodness, you sound just like my grandmother. Why I got to leave my girls alone? And I was like, because you, you, um, I see something in you, you know, you're on your way. And sometimes you have to leave people behind. And she was just like, oh, I thought you was going to be happy. I was like, I'm happy. And mm -hmm. so when I saw her a few months later, I was um, off. I decided to go in the store. She was doing wonderful. She was doing excellent. And I remember her telling me, now I understand what you and my grandmother was telling me about leaving certain people behind. So mm -hmm. that um, just um, in our talks, because she was the only one who received what I would say to yeah. them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, that's awesome. And I know you have so many stories like that because <laughs> you are just that light, you know, when you get on the bus, it's like, oh, good morning. <laughs> uh, and not all the bus operators do that. So I know <laughs> that you have many, many stories to tell like that. But, you know, uh, and it's amazing to me to watch you and know that you have this beautiful, awesome and audacious spirit that you have Thank and you. You have gone through some of life's most difficulties. And I know that uh, some time ago, you had a very devastating blow to your life. Uh, and I want you to share with the audience so that they'll know, you know, this contrast in which you live. And, and a lot of people listening have had to live this contrast. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not genuine. People are trying to force themselves to be happy when they're not, but mm -hmm. that's not the sense of the spirit that you have. You know, mm -hmm. you have a genuine joy in spite of some of life's difficulties, you know, landing at your doorstep. Share with the audience um, the devastating blow that you and your family experienced. Um, it was uh, August 2011. Um, my older son, who was my middle child, he was um, jumped. Um, and as a result of that, um, he passed away. Um, his death. And so let me stop you because some people listening, because this is international, they may not know what jumped means. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> he was attacked um, by um, five or six different uh, guys. Mm -hmm. And um, as a result, he passed away from the injuries. Um, and I remember um, standing there when I got to uh, Fort Washington Medical Center and um, the doctors had said that um, he's not responding. She needs to get here now. And I'm just like, mm. but in my heart of hearts, I already knew yeah. that um, that he was no longer with us on this side. Um, the, it was so much that happened that night um, that let me know um, when I can remember looking up at the sky and I saw an opening and I just saw what looked like um, white lights just kind of gliding across the sky. Mm -hmm. And in my heart of hearts, I knew that was the angels ushering him in. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and, uh, and it's, um, this morning, just this morning, um, whenever I open my Bible, I read wherever it falls. Mm -hmm. So it fell open to Daniel three. So that's the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So mm -hmm. I read that this morning and I can remember, and therefore, um, you to just say that, um, uh, that I have this joy even after that. And I can remember that part where Nebuchadnezzar was like, um, they don't, they, there's someone else there, um, have them come out. They don't, they, their clothes weren't burned. They don't smell like they've been in a fire, you know? And I remember God dropping in my spirit, um, a, a conversation, one of my supervisors, um, from um, Metro, when I was sharing her the story of what happened that night to my son, she was just boohooing. She said, if you would have never told me, I would have never thought you went through anything like that because you smile and you greet 
everybody. Mm -hmm. She was like, so I would have never known. And so I get that quite a bit, but I remember um, my, um, my son, when my children, when they were younger, um, we've had conversations about death when they were younger, when um, people close to us who passed away. Mm -hmm. And I used to always tell them, if something happened to me, yeah, you'll be sad, but don't stay there. I want you all to enjoy life the way that we do together. Mm -hmm. I always want, you know, you all to do that. And I can remember uh, that particular child, this child, Elijah, he had pretty much that same stance. He understood. He was wiser than his years. He understood um, when I said that. And he was like, that's important. So one of the things that I take with me, um, he always wanted to take care of his family. He, all, he had this zest for learning and for life. We could go in um, Barnes and Noble and we could get whatever books and we could sit there for hours on end or go to a museum and just kind of stare at a painting for um, you know a long periods of time and um, just um, just that that is something about that quiet that quiet that solitude and just that quietness of just those simple things and just enjoying um family and friends and just enjoying life and and I used to always tell them that but I never knew that I would have to follow that advice and um I and I, sometimes I feel um like uh you rob um I see a lot of people who've gone through what I've gone through but they rob the family members that's left to you of them because they get wrapped up and they get caught up in it. And, um, um, and it, it is, and I don't dwell, one of the things that helped me, I don't dwell on the way he left here because in my private talks with God, I tell him all the time, I don't like the way he left here. I, I don't. Um, but I, I don't dwell on that. And I rarely go to that night. I think about what he stood for, who he loved, what he believed in. And that helps me continue, continue on and keep on loving on the people that love me. Yeah, that's so powerful. And, you know, that's, that I, that's grace, you know, that is the grace of God on your life. That yeah. is, um, you know, supernatural strength that comes mm -hmm. from God, but you yeah. have to be open to receive that kind of supernatural strength. And, you know, and I, I can attest to the fact that this joy that you have deep within is genuine because I've known you for about 20 years mm -hmm. uh, or so. And, mm -hmm. you know, being able to see you and know what you have gone through and to see how you continue to engage life where you have not you know, kind of left everybody else because mm -hmm. that happened to you. Uh, and mm -hmm. you've written about that in <clears throat> this book, Faith for Fiery Trials. And it's been a blessing to so many people. Share some of the reactions and responses that you've gotten from people reading your story because you're such a prolific, uh, awesome writer. And I'm looking forward to your solo books that you're going to be writing, but share the kind of impact that you sharing your story has had on people who have read it. Um, two sisters come to mind immediately. Um, and both of them are my coworkers and they both um, had to bury children as well. One sister, she was like, um, I, I read it. I cried and she said, I felt everything you felt mm -hmm. except you whispered in your son's ear, if you want to go, go, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. She said, I said the opposite. I told my son, please don't leave me because I need you here. And we just embraced and she was like, it was a reason why um, we met because I needed, she said, your story I can identify with. Mm -hmm. She was like, but every story in the book, I saw some, some part of my life in it. Um, 
And there was another sister who, um, when you look at her book, she has notes, highlights, uh, post-its, every single, every story. And she was like, I tell you when she was like, when I'm going through, I grab the book. She was like, because I can relate so much. And she was like, you buried one, I buried two. And she was like, I, when I'll go and sit by their grave and just read and it gives me strength. And that right there, I'm like, God, really? Wow. That, I was like, that, that, it has to come from God because it, it's certainly not me. And I'm so, um, grateful to be used as an instrument um, that someone can say, even on my worst day, I can pick up something that you wrote and um, it, it blesses me. Yeah. Well, I can tell you um, that story, you, 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 you know, I love writers that write from their heart because you know, there is a transference, I believe, when mm-hmm. people write like that. Uh, mm-hmm. And that's where healing takes place through writing. And, you know, your writing can go places that you may never go. That mm-hmm. story is one that you feel the energy, you feel your heart from the beginning to the end. And, you know, I really want to encourage you as you have been doing to just continue to share your story. And I know days, you know, some days are more difficult than others. You know, no one is, you know, so uh, out of it to believe that, you know, you don't have your moments too, even though you have joy and love. Um, And so let me ask you, how have you dealt with, you know, those days when you have just been overwhelmed with your own grief? Um, When I'm overwhelmed with my grief, I have to, I have to go outside. I can't look out the window. Um, I can't, I definitely can't sit inside. Um, Because to me, I, I've always believed that um, God was his breath and his death, his death is so, um, it's so deep and it's so wide. We can't understand it. So for me, I have to go outside because I have to be able to look up at the sky. I have to be able to look as far as I can. Mm-hmm. And um, just when I start walking and I uh, start noticing the trees, um, it could be a squirrel. Um, where I live now in the city, uh, is clo- this part is called Bald Eagle, uh, Bald Eagle Park. And I never knew it was I'd never equated that it was called bald eagle because there are um there are bald eagles in this area and it amazes me because sometimes when I'm out there are um I don't know if it's the same one but it's this one that he just kind of come and he will circle uh, up above and he comes kind of low and he just circle and circle and it's like once I notice him he fly off and um, so I have to be out in nature. I have to um, be, um, I do a lot of earth therapy, um, grounding where I will take my shoes off and just stand in the grass. But mm-hmm. I have to be as close to um, God's green earth and his expanse uh, as possible. Oh, that is so beautiful. That's so beautiful. You know, when I think about that, you know, you talk about the bald ego. Um, I too experienced something very similar. You know, I lost my mother and my grandmother uh, in the same month, November uh, 2005. I was eight and a half months pregnant. And, you know, um, after I had my son, I remember the first time I was going to preach after that. Mm -hmm. There, I looked outside of my window, there was a red bird sitting on the, um, the, you know, on my porch Mm -hmm. and sat there and it just sat there and it just Mm -hmm. sat there. And shortly after that, because there aren't a lot of red birds around here, Mm -hmm. shortly after that, I started seeing more red birds around and every time my spirit would be low. Mm-hmm. A red bird would show up. And so, you know, that's the power of the spirit. You mm-hmm. know, that's the power of, you know, God letting our um, ancestors now, 
mm-hmm. you know, let us know that mm, I'm with you. Mm-hmm. You know, um, yeah. I'm with you and, you know, you're never alone. Uh, and this is some tangible way that I'm showing up for you. So, you know, that's good. And I want to encourage you to, you know, unpack that whole bald eagle thing, the whole eagle and just what the eagle stands for, because that is just powerful. And, you know, I um, I went to um, a friend of mine. She had... Um, an event for women a few months ago and she had um all the animals there um and what their the spirit animal qualities were and i was just reading over it a couple days ago about the bald eagle and how keen he is and how he's very observant and when i think and a, a friend he when I told him about the bald eagle, I was talking to him one day on the phone and I said, oh, wow, he's outside of my window. He was actually circling. And it, and once we, it was almost as if we made eye contact, then he just flew away. And so he was like, you know, that's one of your ancestors. And I had never heard that before. Mm-hmm. And so he said, you need to figure out which one. And um, I, or in my heart of hearts, I already knew, but I didn't say anything to him at the moment. Mm-hmm. And um, when I, I just remember my, how observant my son was and how he would, he, he knew a lot of people and he, um, his dad's side, that side of his family is very large. Um, but sometimes he would just go off and um, by himself um, and he would just observe a lot. Um, and, and, and I, re, um, one of the qualities of the, uh, bald eagle, they were like, he's very, he's very calculated, um, he or she, and a lot of times when they come low, they only go, come low when they have a reason to, other than that, they, they stay high. So mm-hmm. it was just, um, so much that was unpacked, um, mm-hmm. um, it, but it's so much more that I have to as well, but, um, mm-hmm. yeah. Wow. That's, that's awesome and amazing. And I feel that, you know, that your son is just wanting you to know I'm okay. And he's keeping an eye on you, Uh, (laughs) you know, because one of the characteristics, like you said, you know, they have keen sense of sight, you Mm -hmm. know, so to be able to zoom in uh, Mm -hmm. on you, I I think that's so powerful. And, um, you know, I know that you have um, been able to share your story and, um, you know, go on to speak at various places, you know, just about uh, how you have overcome. And so as our time is beginning to wrap up, you know, um, what's, what, what, what's in your heart, you know, to women now, because of course we see the spike in um, violence in our cities all across the country. Um, you know, what kind of um, comfort Um, Are you sharing with other mothers when you've had the opportunity to talk with them? Some people who are, you know, in in the faith and other people who are not. And so share some of the um, strategies that you've been able to use yourself and to offer other women uh, in particular. We know men are impacted, but men can speak to men. Um, And Mm -hmm. I'm sure that they, too, can get something out of this when they listen. But women in particular, um, when they lose their children. Um, I think the first thing, um, is to feel every emotion. Don't suppress anything. If it's anger, if it's sad, if it's guilt, um, because a lot of times when we feel that we didn't do things right, or you may remember a situation, um, dad, I was too hard on him or her, and um, they're not here anymore. I never did get a chance to apologize. Whatever the feeling is, feel it. Just don't unpack and don't live there in it, but feel it and, um, and find something that they enjoy, whether it was something that Um, they did before they had children or something they did with their child that they enjoy and you have to find um, you have to find uh, something so you won't just sit there and dwell on um, the way because usually especially um, it's hard for all parents but the ones whose children were brutally murdered um, like my son um, I, you know, 
I just I can't sit I can't think about that day in and day out and some people do um but but the main thing is to definitely feel their emotions um and just go through them and a lot of times um stay keep stay around the family and friends that you enjoy being around um do something with them don't isolate yourself because one of the things that i have learned um is the enemy if he can get you by yourself he can put so much in your head that's not even true and um then you start falling forward and you start slipping you kind of you spiral downward mm -hmm. um so I, I um I remember a grief counselor um um had told me that and he was like surround yourself with the people that you enjoy he said not just anybody because there is a, a ministry of silence and some people need to practice it and and it's hard for um people who've never gone through it they they will say some things when the only thing that I know for me and a lot of other mothers that I talk to, um, they just want to be amongst family, but just be quiet. Some just don't say, if you don't know what to say, you yeah. know, don't say anything that <laughs> that's for people who yeah. may have family members that have gone through, um, who have buried a child. Um, but definitely, uh, I like to um, encourage them that um, you did the best that you could do, humanly do. If they are a uh, spiritual um, meditation, prayer, journaling, mm -hmm. um, um, I encourage them, you know, to do that. But my main thing is find something that, that your heart connects with. Um, so you won't get stuck. Yeah. And that's good. And I'm so glad you also mentioned about a grief counselor. You know, my mantra is, you know, counseling plus Jesus equals you can't go wrong. Right. That's my mantra. Yes. Uh, I believe thoroughly wholeheartedly in counseling um, mm -hmm. because there are just things in our lives that happen and we need help to process yes. those things and move on with our yes. lives, you know, as yes. best we can. Yes. I, I know um, Dr. S that you referred me to. She mm -hmm. was like, I was about to retire, but when I listened to your message and I heard who referred um, you I was like I could take one more I yeah. could take one more and she actually came to hear me speak one day mm -hmm. and she had just had surgery and um so just for her to um to do that um and you know um and just coming from a, a minor surgery surgical you know appointment the day before mm -hmm. that just meant so much to me so yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's yeah. awesome. Dr. Kim Singleton is yeah. her name. Um, she has a wonderful book um, and um, yeah. you can find her on Amazon. Broken Silence is the name yeah. of it. Um, she's just powerful. awesome and amazing. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And I highly recommend her, Dr. Kim Singleton, highly mm -hmm. recommend her. Well, our time is wrapping up and I'm so grateful and thankful uh, to God for our connection, our relationship. If people want to just reach out and talk to you, want to invite you to speak to their groups, how can they reach you? Um, I'm, I'm on Facebook under Rhonda Rhonda. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, it um at my page it is public um i have to i've been out of the loop for a while for everything i have to set my uh website back up and everything but they can definitely message me um on facebook and i will return as soon as possible excellent very good okay well thank you for joining us on the nicole mason show you can follow me across social media at Nicole S. Mason, ESQ. Website is Nicole S. Mason.com. And you can join my Facebook group. Uh, it's called Confidence Champions, where we are helping women to speak up confidently in their call and their career. Have a wonderful day and join us for the next episode of the Nicole Mason Show. Thank you. Thank you for having me.